after like few minutes and then just check the audio with the audio hi everyone again welcome to this um, course on the linux programming and scripting um, we covered the first uh, two modules the basics of linux and then the linux networking uh, last time we covered the second part of the one of the file system that we were studying um, we studied two file systems um, the sun nss as well as the um, andrew file system uh, the andrew file system is what we covered uh, in the last lecture we also went through all the the differences between the andrew file system and the sun nss and um, we noted certain similarity certain uh, differences the similarity was that both use um, some kind of a virtual uh, file system manager um for the andrews uh, file system basically uh, it was more like a process running which um, handles all these uh, virtualization whereas um, for the nss we have to mount those uh, file systems uh, separately um and then uh, the control was more um, at the client side for the um, um the nfs system whereas it's in the server side for the andrew file system so the andrew file system is more versatile um, more um, secure um and we also saw that the andrew file system um we don't need to um actually um 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 there are like many andrew file system um uh, set up basically like i mean so the, the subnet or uh, sub network kind of uh, um systems are not there whereas um, the nfs is more distributed um, as uh, clusters um so i mean there are like uh, few andrew file system based um, services available today and then we also saw that actually uh, andrew file system is basis for some of the standardization that happened in the um distributed file system area um so i just want to keep uh, i just want to want you to keep that in mind so today we are going to switch gears and uh, talk about uh, the programming aspect of the course um, so we will be starting with uh, a simple language called perl um and this perl language is used widely in the industry um especially in the um, high tech companies um in fact a lot of uh, software companies also use uh, this particular language the perl language the hardware companies uh, for all kinds of scripting they use uh, this perl language uh, we will learn about why this is um, used uh, widely and what makes it more attractive than uh, the traditional programming languages like uh, fortran or uh, c or c++ uh, again perl has uh, many variants um, um but the the most significant change in perl is the recent one which is the um, object oriented perl uh, which we will touch upon towards the end of the end of this um, material um so let's look at uh, what we have in the agenda for today um so we will start with the introduction today we i'll be introducing mostly to the data side of things uh, in perl even though we will touch upon a couple of commands because um, without understanding some basic commands we cannot understand the data in its full fullest extent uh, so we will go through some of the stuff and mostly today we will talk about the scalar data which is essentially a single variable or the variable that holds a single value um and then we will have also we will talk about the array and the list data uh, arrays you can think of that as um, a data structure which has um, some kind of uh, um array the uh, scalars or um, the scalars themselves are there are many scalar data which is uh, arrayed together so they have some commonality like i mean how to index them things like that and then we'll also look at some of the list based uh, data which is um, 
um, again um, they are also kind of arrays but they are specialized arrays you can think of that way. Um, so that is the uh, pretty much what we will do and as usual you know um, we will talk about um, how to write some basic scripting in Perl today and then as we go through the course we will uh, progressively increase the level of difficulty and uh, hopefully by end of uh, this uh, module uh, you will all be like well trained programmers in Perl and um, you can write any scripts anytime um, with um, uh, any, any um, um, whatever the specific mission that you that are given to you. Um, again, I, I just wanted to say that uh, the basic algorithms when you're writing pro programs, they are all similar, and probably you have already covered those things um, in your uh, undergrad and uh, other courses. Uh, so I, I won't be talking about the algorithms as to how to do it. Um, if you have questions, we can always um, talk about talk talk it over. Um, but mostly, like I mean, we will be focusing on the syntax and the semantics uh, in the Perl language itself. So let's look at um, the Perl, uh, just an introduction to Perl. Um, so Perl stands for Practical Extraction and Report Language. Um, so it's it's a big mouthful actually, but uh, people always refer to this as Perl. Um, and um, if um, for people like I mean who um, like the the language, um, um, it's uh, they also talk call it as a pathologically eclectic rubbish lister. Um, and then, um, whereas like I mean, some people who still don't like Perl, uh, they call it like pointless exercise in redundancy. And just uh, think about it basically, only submit it because they think that that's redundant. So uh, anyway, um, depends on uh, which group you are. Um, if you are well versed in uh, other languages like uh, C, C plus plus, and you are always like um, hands on with those languages, you won't find this uh, that useful. Uh, probably you will still uh, go towards those languages. But um, if you are more like me, uh, who's uh, Essentially, like I mean, I do programming for solving some of my problems. Um, then you will like Perl better because um, it gives you a very easy and very quick platform to do your program. Um, on the history front, the creator of Perl is uh, Larry Wall. Um, so, and then the versions got updated with hot fixes and new enhancements and version 4 is pretty much the standard version that people use uh, and then there is also a new version version 5 which is uh, more auditory into so if you look at your textbooks um, essentially like I mean it will tell you whether it is a uh, based on the version 4 or version 5 and I would recommend you to actually at least um, look at the version 5 books because uh, that has the auditory uh, constructs uh, already present. And then uh, the main purpose of Perl, uh, why he developed that is uh, for the Unix user. So in Unix, you get like two kinds of uh, programming uh, that we saw already. One is this uh, shell scripts, which we touched upon it briefly as to how to do like some shell scripting um, with uh, various uh, commands. Um, the arc, grep, all those things basically that you can use it in you know, shell scripts. Uh, the shell scripts are cumbersome to write and they are not really portable. So that is one reason we are looking for a formal language. Uh, the formal languages like C and other languages are complicated, they are um, um, strongly typed languages. It is not really useful for people in other areas like say for example VLSI design to do some programming. So in VLSI design as you know. Um, you want to um, augment your work with programming rather than the programming itself becomes part of your main work. So in that kind of scenario um, you need a lightweight language which has some formalism not like a script but at the same time you do not want like too much formalism like um, um, any other language. 
so that's the reason why people opted for Perl. Um, so here is a simple script. Um, essentially, like I, I just wanted to highlight a few things here. Um, so we know these things basically. One is this hash bang. Hash bang is essentially uh, to tell the your shell that whatever is following that uh, in the file is a script and then we have this uh, user bin Perl which uh, specifies the path to the Perl executable um, which now like uses this as a main interpreter and then uh, then it starts basically like, I mean, um, in Perl these are all like constructs in Perl so this itself is a command uh, and then followed by arguments. And here notice that there is a quote here, so this thing is under the inside the quote and then there is a backslash n and then at the end there is a semicolon. So I just wanted to, to just uh, observe these things at this point, we will come back to it uh, in a while as to why they are and what is the significance of each of them. Again in this state, this one again this is another print statement, it uh, says what is your name, this is a quote and the semicolon. And then um, we have another special stuff which is this dollar sign and then uh, name and then again here also there is another special stuff with less than and greater than and then there is something in between which is stdin and then here there is a, another command uh, chop command for this one there is no um, the semicolon, but instead there is a, there are parentheses, and then plus there is a the dollar name, the same thing that appears here. Too. Okay, uh, and then finally another print statement with uh, some more arguments. So um, if you look at this particular statement, this may be like it, you may be familiar with this construct, which is very similar to like a C construct where you're calling a subroutine with a subroutine name and an argument and if you just leave this as blank then you know that there is no argument to that one. So anyway we will um, come to this um, in a minute but um, so this is a simple uh, program uh, what it does is this uh, we will see in the next slide uh, what exactly it is it do. Um, so here we can execute this program in the Unix system. Uh, again you know some other things basically so again here you know that actually uh, the percentage is the shell that stands for the shell and then you basically type in the hello dot Perl which is your Perl command and before you give this you need to make sure that this is uh, the execute permissions are set that uh, there is the change mode um, 777 or change mode at least uh, some um, one at least you need to have one there uh, or plus x uh, with this file name so that you can execute it directly and here the way it works is essentially it prints out this hello world this is the first statement that we saw and then it goes to the next line and then it asks for what is your name and then it waits for the user to input this portion. So the user types in his name and immediately it uh, says hey welcome the user. So we saw that actually like this particular um, input is captured under dollar name. And then the dollar name is what is uh, printed. Yeah. These are the things that we saw in the earlier program, right? I mean, so um, uh, let's see more about uh, Perl itself. 
so if you are running it on the pc actually then uh, you have this uh, keyword uh, perl um, and then you can actually run the perl with, uh, with the command file here yeah, it's called ex01 but it could be also like hello about perl um, again the same thing uh, it also does the same stuff and this you can run it within uh, terminal in fact uh, um, windows essentially um, and then there are a lot of versions available uh, to install uh, Perl versions available that you can install on a PC and then run it. So now let's talk about uh, some simple rules that um, in Perl that we will begin with. Um, so number one is Perl is uh, is more like an interpreter. Um, so in a compiled language like C or C++ um, you have to first compile the program into an executable and then the executable is can be run basically. and the executable is uh, it cannot be read by humans uh, read by humans and it is more like it is machine code and there the compiler does a lot of optimization to come up with the best code possible which also has uh, minimize the run time and things like that. So, uh, the compiler course is a separate course and essentially uh, I urge you to take it when you get a chance because that will teach you a lot of uh, techniques that the modern compilers use uh, to eliminate uh, redundancy and eliminate um, um, uh, loops and things like that. Um, but for Perl actually you can think of this as an interpreter it interprets line by line. And then basically executes this line directly. It does not need to generate anything uh, uh, in intermediate format. And this is a great help because this is the one of the reasons why uh, engineers like this, especially electrical engineers like Perl, because it's more like what you see is what you get. Basically, you can just code the program and just run it that is it basically you do not need to meddle with it you do not need to compile it you do not need to optimize it nothing whatever you write immediately execute. So that is one good thing and then uh, Perl is also a, a pre format language so um, essentially um, the format is not dictated by where the white space is or how the white space is formed. So, um, so you can actually use white spaces uh, freely. If it is one white space or many white space, it doesn't care. Um, the, as you as you have seen, like the earlier example, the commands are terminated by semicolons. That's the reason why the put semicolon at the end of the command. Um, and um, essentially, like the indentation of programs, we do it only for human readability purposes. It has nothing to do with uh, whether Perl needs some indentation or something. You will see that there is some difference when we talk about language like Python, which is not a free format, and then basically there the white space means certain things. Um, even in Tickle, actually, the white space means certain things. So we, we will see like where to put white space, where not to put white space in both those languages um, in the coming sections, coming um, um, weeks. But right now I wanted to think about uh, Perl as a free format language and uh, you can use white space um, totally free. Um, and then another thing is uh, Perl just starts executing from the top just one by line by line it just goes and executes one by one. There is no concept of a main uh, routine. So um, whereas like I mean in um, language like the C actually always uh, only the main routine will get executed wherever it is if it is in the last uh, section it just executes the main from that last section and then um, essentially inside main you can put a lot of um, functions uh, uh, subroutines and then basically let do that that subroutine and um, actually running it as subroutine is still supported uh, in fact some of these um, uh, the Perl libraries themselves comprises of a lot of subroutines for various commands. For example, this um, the chop command that we saw, it's it's a classic subroutine type of a command essentially, which may be like uh, then split it into multiple uh, different uh, um, uh, 
other commands and then that we call some of the commands which essentially you know, serves as the chop function. We will look at what that function does shortly. So just wanted to let you know this one and then uh, let's see some more. Um, to incorporate comments actually the comments start with a hash sign uh, uh, and then they continue until the end of the line. So every line which starts or at some point there is a hash um, is treated as a comment line. Only exception to this rule is the first line which we saw that actually in the script it started with uh, hash uh, bang. The hash bang itself is together is a one command which tells the um, the the program that he this is the it identifies this particular file as a Perl program. So uh, that is the only reason why we use that, uh, and that had needs to be the first line of, of file. So that's the only uh, restriction there. Um, <coughs> so anything after that hash until the end of the line will be ignored. So you can actually put a hash at the end of a particular command. Once you close the command with a semicolon, you can put a hash and write what the command does. And it's perfectly legal in, in Perl. Um, only thing is, like you need to make sure that the, the command is closed. Uh, there are some commands uh, actually, like I mean, I'll take it back. In any cases, um, you can start with a hash and just continue. Um, the only restriction is when you're mixing many languages together, um, like a tickle with Perl and things like that. Um, there, you need to follow some additional rules, but in the pure Perl language, anytime you start uh, inside the line with a hash, whatever is uh, the remaining until the end of the line is treated as a command. So, in C, actually, um, we have these uh, multi line comments. Um, I, I think, like, you must be familiar with that. Um, um, basically, like in C, we can do this. Uh, like put a slash and then uh, star and then blah 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 and then put another star and then a slash. This entire thing is a command. In um, Perl, actually, um, it's not like that. Basically, like you need to do the hash and then whatever is that line is one command and then another hash and then the line is another command. So. They cannot be just combined. So just wanted you to be aware of that. And then the other um, um, rule in uh, um, Perl, Perl, uh, Perl language is that uh, the names are all case sensitive. So the uppercase name and lowercase name this is different. So again that um, if you are writing a program make sure that you stick with one case and uh, essentially like I mean, um, you have to that is the only way that it will work. And the Perl program itself consists of several statements um, we already saw like uh, at least uh, uh, Three types of statements. Um, the one was the print statement. Uh, the print actually had an argument within a quote. We will see why is that. And then we also saw the chop command, which is basically um, the argument was within a within a parenthesis. Then the third type is uh, that we saw was an assignment, where we say like the dollar name equal to um, less than stdin greater than. That is another type of uh, statement. So, um, we will have like several of them basically, we will introduce you to more number of statements as we go through this uh, lecture. And then every statement is terminated by a semicolon. So, that is the reason why uh, also, like, I mean, this is um, um, uh, the language itself is. Um, uh, format free uh, because um, the you can terminate the end of uh, the statement is only determined by the semicolon. 
um, so the only exception to this rule is when you have comments okay. so just keep that in mind or when you have the command which is like starting with the uh, hash you don't need to terminate it with the semicolon because it's technically not a statement. So some more rules. Um, so the general format of any statement will be uh, an operator, um, and followed by a number of arguments. And usually the arguments are enclosed within the parentheses. Um, so, but some sometimes we can actually, or even most of the time, we can eliminate that parentheses themselves. So you don't have to actually specify the parentheses and the. Uh, Anything that is within double quotes is a string, and it is stored similar to C. Basically, um, it's stored as a string. String is also an array of uh, characters you can say. And then um, Perl itself does not impose any built-in limit on the size of a string, but sometimes your the regular operating system can impose some limits. So you have to when that limit is reached, actually, like the program can open. So you, the the thing is basically you can read the entire book, like all the characters inside the book, as a single string. So um, you can think of your Perl book, which probably has like uh, more than 500 pages, and from the beginning of the page to the end of the page, the entire string, you can just, I mean, you, entire character set, you can think of that as just a single string inside Perl, uh, provided the Operating system allows that. So Perl itself does not put any restriction, but the operating system needs. And um, there is also a single quoted string. We will see the distinction between the single quoted string and the strings with double quotes in a later stage. Um, I don't want to uh, tell you the all the things at, at this point. And then the, the biggest uh, advantage with Perl is there is no need to declare any variables, and this is one of the reasons or one of the big reasons why um, people love Perl. Uh, in other languages, um, if you don't declare and start using um, um, a variable, the, the program will start complaining, basically saying that hey, you haven't allocated that variable, you cannot use it because it's uh, used by somebody else. Um, so it can actually do some uh, whether the particular um, variable is live and things like that some kind of analysis program analysis. here in Perl you can just uh, use it um, as you go uh, and then uh, basically the tool will figure out how to assign this variable. Um, one caution I will say is uh, I still recommend you to declare the variables um, at least uh, set it up what variables that you are using in within a program uh, at the beginning of the program. Uh, the reason is uh, it is just to improve the user, uh, readability because uh, you may use some certain algorithm certain things and the person who is actually reading it uh, may not understand what kind of variables you used where you used them things like that. So it will be a good, good idea or good practice to actually declare it up front. And then use them basically. So again, it does not impose. So maybe like uh, things like uh, loops and stuff like that, you may not need to declare those variables, like for i equal to one to ten or something like that. I you don't need to define that. But in any case, any other situation, like um, if you are doing an algorithm and you you have a way to solve the problem, that those variables, uh, if you specify it up front. That really helps uh, the next person who tries to understand how you wrote the program. And then the other thing that we saw was this dollar sign in the first uh, program. Uh, so any scalar variable uh, is uh, started with that dollar sign. So if you write a dollar name, dollar x, y, z, any other kind of dollar something, Perl knows that that's a variable. So uh, and it is also it's a scalar variable means like that variable can hold only one value. And then the backslash characters they are they are similar to the C program itself. Uh, for example, the backslash n is a new line character. The backslash t is the tab. 
so you can actually create it like a lot of these uh, backslash characters. Um, even special characters, if you want to uh, make them make sure that they can print, you need to make sure that that that's uh, escape with the backslash. So we just call it like escape character, but it's the backslash. Um, then there is a concept of uh, file handlers, and there are some standard files which actually comes uh, by default with uh, Perl installation. Uh, the standard file handlers are uh, stdin, std out, std err, and arg. The std in stands for standard in, which means that the file that is basically where uh, whatever you're typing in, in the keyboard gets logged. Essentially, it's not logged. Actually, that's uh, the file that operating system uses. That file's address is the standard in. And then the operating system, wherever it puts out the particular file or as an output, that's the standard out. And then there is also like an alternate method that uh, operating system uses um, to produce some output um, um, reports. Um, basically, that is the std or the standard error that can also go in there. And ARG is a generalized file handler for um, getting some data. So you can actually uh, put like, um, and this is basically we will see like uh, are the values that you can input, um, and uh, it figures out the how to get those values. So here, um, anytime we assign the standard in to a variable, it grabs the line of input. So the entire line is uh, taken from the input and then assigned to this std. So if you think about it basically including the new line the next line going to the next line everything is captured and dumped it into this uh, stdin. So we made a scalar variable called dollar name and then we made that equal to this uh, standard in so whatever it's standard in is reading that is what goes into the uh, scalar variable. Again you may be confused because uh, string itself as I told you it is just an array of characters. So how can you assign a string uh, which is more like an array to the variable or uh, essentially just a scalar variable which has only one value. Uh, the way we do it is essentially we always uh, treat them as a string and we do not let them wander off rather go out and basically or uh, separate them into like characters and themselves and then basically like they can distribute it. Uh, that is not what we are doing we always treat that as a single singular entity so that is why you can still use a scalar variable to represent that because the scalar variable is now pointing to a single entity. And finally the, the last command uh, chop uh, here we just specify like chop in uh, parenthesis s uh, so s is the argument for the chop command and here the s uh, because like the, the chop command is used top command removes the last character um, from the string uh, from the string yes so um, so this is a useful command there are there is one more way to actually uh, remove this uh, the, the last character we, we will learn about that in the, the, the future lecture. So this is the example that we saw so uh, now like I mean it is much more clear there is the the commands so if if you look at it there are three types one two and three these are the three types of um, statements the first statement is a print statement basically which is just an output statement that output something the second statement is more like an input statement basically it uh, gets it waits for uh, the std in uh, to be input and then basically assigns it to the name the third one is more like an operational statement which is within the program itself which is um, it chops the last character from dollar uh, which is typically the new line character. And then uh, finally the print uh, hello is the output one which um, as, it, as it goes basically it prints the dollar name which is uh, this um, the variable that holds whatever you type in. So Play with it. I think uh, this is a good uh, little exercise uh, that will help you hone in some of the skills. So um, before we go into the variables themselves, uh, the scalar variables and the array variables in more detail, 
let's look at one statement and then we can move on. The statement what we have is uh, the if else is else statement. So notice that there, is, there are no then here. Um, so the way it works is again here. Um, We start with the statement I F or A, and then in the parenthesis we specify the argument for this, you know, uh, which could be like uh, either uh, um, equality, inequality, or some logic function. We will see like what kind of logic function that we can use here. Um, but again, the the way it works is um, the condition if it evaluates to a one, uh, one in uh, Perl is what is called true. And then zero is false. So if it evaluates to one, then it executes whatever is between these two brackets. So this this code will get executed. If this one is not evaluates to a zero, then it goes into this loop. In this loop, actually, like there, there's a parenthesis uh, that is missing here. So you think of this as more conditions here. So the using that parenthesis it evaluates and finds out whether um, again it if it evaluates to zero or a one. If this happens to be a zero again, then it switches and goes to this else. And if you look at here, basically there is no else. So this is the catch all condition where any anything that uh, fails to execute in these uh, buckets will get executed at least here. So um, this is uh, like a Small example of an if statement. We will go into more details and more uh, complex examples soon. Okay. So let's look at the operators that I mentioned. Basically, the operations can be performed in. Uh, Two ways. One is a numerical operator, which is performed on numbers, just like um, if one greater than two or one less than two, things like that, where both sides evaluate into a uh, number. Then we can actually compare them with these operators. So the numerical operators are double equal to, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, not equal to. So look at that actually for uh, the the. Um, the equal to testing is using two equal to. If you do only one equal to, basically it is an assignment statement. It's no longer a logical testing statement. Similarly, at the string level, actually you can do an eq less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and not equal to. So this is again another way to express that information. So here. It's a little bit more complex, complicated example with the, the things that we learned, which is if else if else. So here also it starts with the same things basically. The user local bin pearl. We won't go into that details, that detail for this basically, but. Here, this portion is pretty much the same as uh, the previous uh, example, which is like if you print your name, then it waits for the standard in. And now, if the name, so let's look at the, the remaining stuff as to what is going on. So, if the dollar name equal to a particular person, we here it's Stephen, then it will print welcome Stephen. If the name is equal to Jessica, then it will print how are you? Jessica and then exit out and then if it's none of the above then it will print hey what are you doing here maybe like I mean this is not your computer and you have no interest in doing anything with it so that's a, that's another way that you can use so now we will go into the arrays. Um, so array variables, as I mentioned, you basically listen to you. Uh, it's basically it's a collection of scalar variables, and array variables typically begin with an ampersand as opposed to a dollar. 
for the uh, uh, for the um, uh, scalar variables. So again, we know that actually the um, Perl is case sensitive. Now we are adding one more. Essentially, like I mean, if the same commands exist basically. Like they are actually two different commands, two different variables. For example, here the dollar name. Um, Yeah, the dollar name and at dollar name they are two different uh, variables they have different meanings and they, they can be completely different variables as well. So a small example here which is um, at name equals to Adam Bob and Charlie and then semicolon. So here you can see that basically this is the the, the name. Or um, uh, the array name, and then this is the array declaration where it's, uh, it's uh, Adam, Bob, and Charlie. So um, let's look at uh, how to retrieve this array. Uh, okay, before okay, so we will figure out like how to do how to retrieve this when you do the actual program itself. But let's look at associative array because this is another key area that um, um, that will be used in a lot of times basically. So associative array um, is kind of an array which does not have um, uh, integers or numbers as index essentially. It can have actually um, different in the indices essentially whether it can be a just a Number or a numerical value or any string, anything can be used as a, as a key, or actually as a key or the index for that array. So again, one thing is for this type of array, you have a key instead of the actual index. We don't call it as an index; we just call it as key. And then basically, it need not be numerical. So those are the two things that I want you to remember. Now let's see like what happens. So it uses a prefix percentage for um, the associative array instead of this at symbol. And then so the a simple array could be just a percentage student equal to name David height six point one degree PhD. So the way to read it is basically uh, the first one is the index, the second one is the value, or we won't call the index but the key. And then the second one is the value. So in this case, essentially, like the the percentage student or the student array consists of three fields. First field is the name, second field is the height, and third field is the degree. And then it just stick, um, assigns these values to that particular location. So um, if you say like student name, then that will go that will that will um, Give you the output as um, David, for example. This is what I mean. It's, uh, it's not even go there. So we can also like refer to as just uh, yeah. So um, let me raise this out. You can say percentage student and then specify it as and this will be given as uh, this day is height again same thing it's height and then it is Come up with six point. You say degree, then it will print PhD. So again, this is a very useful concept. Essentially, like uh, as I told you, like I mean, this is used by many many uh, programs and many tools. Essentially, for um, getting some uh, 
uh, clarity um, also like uh, doing some difficult algorithm for example you can uh, write uh, a, a code for um, finding the timing violations the top 10 timing violations in a circuit and you have a full every report uh, possible and then you can write a small Perl script to read through it and then find the 10 first unique path violation uh, from that file it's it's uh, basically um, you need to understand the Perl and basically you know, see like what is the syntax in which it is publishing the various timing paths and then we need to go ahead and do some more massaging of that in order to get that information out um, and we will we will actually like looking we will be looking into this uh, associative array in a big way um, because uh, this is one of the key concepts um, that uh, you should have. So in C and other other programming languages there is a concept of hash, hash array uh, which this is very similar to that concept you can think of it even though the hashes are dynamic hashes you can say like that is a way um, from uh, various um, um, from um, the data structure to data essentially. So um, so um, I think like I mean I'm going to um, leave you with uh, this for today. Um, because um, what we will be uh, starting in the next uh, class will be mostly like with uh, how to do the programming itself using these data structures. So just uh, to recap, we went through this um, um, variables. Um, so today, as I mentioned, basically we will be talking about the scalar variables. So um, we first talked about the regular scalar variables like uh, the dollar name. Uh, so any scalar variables begins with the dollar and then followed by some characters and this character is case sensitive. Um, there are a couple of ways of writing this uh, the variable name one is um, uh, the basically like um, every word is separated with an underscore so and then make those words meaningful of what it is in, in the program. Um, or you can also try to use camel case which is uh, basically capitalize the um, uh, the second word onwards essentially the first word alone stays as lower case but then um, for the second word the first letter will be upper case and then followed by lower case so the camel case is also called camel case so you can use that to um, as a variable name um, I will let you choose uh, because uh, some people like to actually do the underscore thing uh, which is which was very prevalent in uh, 80s and 90s uh, also in 2000s uh, but then with the advent of the other programming languages and people when they became familiar with that like python and things like that python and tickle essentially um, they started writing it in camel case so i will let you choose uh, whichever format uh, that you want to use but just be aware that once you choose a format pretty much it will stick with you for your life so I do not know it, it just happens so um, it is very hard to change in the future time so I choose whichever one that you want but be consistent on that that is that is my message. So that is on the scalar side then on the array variables uh, we saw that actually the array variables are uh, starts with an at symbol instead of a dollar and uh, dollar name and at name are completely like two different variables and in the dollar at name the way that we specify is we write out the all the values that um, that, that particular array can take into that uh, in, in a straight line um, in this example we are using um, like a um, We are using um, um, names or strings as an example, but this could be just uh, numerical values. That's also possible. And here, like string, you can see that actually it's uh, represented with uh, the quotes also, the double quotes.
and then finally we saw the associative array associative array is a type of a data structure which gives like more um, 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 makes it more versatile for Perl in fact uh, one of the concepts uh, is essentially once you know associative array and regular expression which is another thing that we will talk about you are pretty much covered um, for um, Perl because then you can actually write some really really um, uh, complex programs uh, by just understanding these two um, uh, sets essentially which is the uh, associative array and um, and uh, uh, regular expressions. Um, So um, let's see. Um, so for the one one thing about this uh, associative array, is, as I mentioned, essentially um, it has the key value pair. Um, essentially, like that's what we call it. We call this uh, this particular unit. Um, this unit is together, and they are called the key. And then value. So if you denote a key, then it basically represents the value. So and then the key can be like anything. Basically, it can be just numeric keys. It can be um, just uh, um, some strings. However, you want to build it, you can build it. Essentially, like there is no uh, one way to do it. So I think uh, let's uh, conclude at this point uh, here. We can pick it up uh, in the next class from this point onwards. Um, okay. Uh, thanks. Hey Sandeep. Hey Sandeep.